Well, I don't know how he's found the time, but a good mate of the Backyard Tech Channel here on YouTube in Paul Turner has released two new Hybrid X Linux spins. It's system setup and product review time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. First of two for the day. This one, Hybrid X 4 from Paul Turner. G'day everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It is System Setup and Product Review time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Thursday morning, the first of two I hope I can get out today. And uh, Paul Turner. Now, I'm a big supporter of his Hybrid X Linux spins because I've said this in the past, they have been absolutely brilliant. Okay, really, really good. And somehow whilst working full time as he is now, which he's absolutely over the moon about, he's managed to release two Hybrid Xs. Hybrid X4 and 4.1. We're going to take a look at Hybrid X4 for this one. And um, I'll take you through uh, some of the features that we've got for it, if I can just bring up the details. All right, so for Hybrid X4, we're sitting on the K-Ubuntu 18.04 base. We've got some new softwares in there. Uh, as my mobile phone vibrates. We have AppFast, we've got Audacity, Blender, um, Debrit, Digicam is in there, uh, Discover, Grub Customizer, which if you like to play around with Grub, it'll make it a lot easier for you. Info Center, Camoso's in there, Kate's in there, which I'm happy about. KDE Menu Editor, KFind, Kparted, which is like Gparted, uh, K System Logs, Muin Package Manager, Nautilus File Manager, uh, Only Office which is, he's got only Office working now. And I mean, only Office and WPS are now my two pretty much go-to Office applications now for various Linux distros because they work. And I find them a little bit more friendlier than LibreOffice, but that's just my personal opinion. Play on Linux is in there for the gamers. Restretto's in there. Scanlight for scanning. We've got the Ubuntu kernel update utility. Uh, U gets in there, USB image writer, USB stick formatter, and Woe USB. Some of the software that's been removed from Hybrid X4, uh, in comparison to 3, obviously. Um, a la carte's gone, Cheese is gone, Etch is gone, Gnome Software Center's gone, Gparted's gone, Gwenview's gone, KWrite. Look, KWrite and Kate, yeah, look. Either or doesn't really phase me. LibreOffice is gone, which I'm happy about. Simple Scan and Synaptic Package Manager. So that's what's gone in it and what's new in it as well. Now, every time we look at one of Paul Turner's Hybrid Xs, I find them absolutely fantastic. The problem is, is that Everyone's an improvement on the previous one. So I end up having to make my mind up how many hybrid X's I hang on to from going backwards over the current one, if, if that makes any sense. Well, this hour on a Thursday morning, old mate's struggling to understand himself. So I don't know how you guys are going to cope. <laughs> anyway, so as always with our system setup and product review videos here at the Backyard Tech Channel, let's give Hybrid X4 from Paul Turner the Backyard Tech Channel treatment, gonna have a sticky beak at it. Let's get into it. All right, so here's our Hybrid X 4 VM, standard test bench scenario. So we've got four gig of RAM, dual core CPU, and 120 gig drive. Let's, uh, let's give it the Backyard Tech Channel treatment. I'll just uh, extend that so we can actually see it. See there, it's on the K Ubuntu base. <sighs> SM bus, that'd be right. <laughs> All right, let's uh, 
blow that out so everyone can see. Alright. Looks right, does it not? Yes, it does. Next. We'll just put it under slash for the time being. Transfer. Next. And start. Alright, so let's see how long this takes to install. try and get and see if we can't fix the other half's laptop uh, today as well I mean, she can still do other stuff today but unfortunately her uh, her laptop spat the dummy so I'm gonna have to try and get to that today so I could end up getting a bit of content out today this week's been quiet hasn't it I, I get I know most people will sit there and say that Old mate here at the Backyard Tech Channel makes making videos look easy. But I have to tell you, getting three, four videos out a day and edited together and, you know, it it is a lot of work. It may look easy from the viewer's point of view, but, you know, all right, I'm not as extravagant as some YouTubers are and I don't put a whole lot of effort in and scripts and all this type of stuff, but, you know, if I get five videos out in a day, I feel like I've done a full day's work, essentially, uh, literally. To those that um, do take a look at, at these system setup and product reviews, please go and support Paul Turner's hybrid Linux spins, because, and, and go and see what you guys think about it. Because they are very well put together. He does a lot of hard work with them. Um, he puts a lot of effort in. And with him working full time, he still managed to get out two hybrid X's. I just hope he's not burning the candle at both ends. Old mate used to have a habit of doing that. I used to burn the candle at both ends. And hit, once I'd run out of the candle, I'd hit the, I'd hit the wall. never a good thing oh. looking forward to having a look at that massive LCD TV I picked up yesterday a 55 inch behemoth <coughs> at least it's newer than my existing 42 inch because I'm hoping that's got the MPEG-4 capability in it, or H.264 um, in it, because that way a majority of my TVs will be able to receive um, HD signal here in Australia. Here, it's amazing how many people these days they go out and buy a smart TV or something, right? And they plug it up, and my old lady did the same thing. She plugged it up thinking that she'd be able to watch 5K TV. Yes, if the TV upscales, sure, you can upscale HD to 5K, but the old lady didn't want to do that, so she's she's asked me multiple times, why am I, can't I watch you know, Channel 9 here in Australia in 5K? And my answer is because it doesn't broadcast it. She's like, I bought a 5K TV. I'm like, yeah, you might have bought a 5K TV, but by definition and default, it's not going to upscale HD to 5K coming off a um, OTA signal or free-to-air TV. You'd think by now, with me having been doing this for so long, especially with TVs and home audio and that, that you know, the old bag had listened to me, but no. How many machines have I got running at the moment? Just open Mandriver. Oh, 
my fairing. I can turn that off. It's not doing anything at the moment. Alright. Now, according to Paul, Hybrid X 4.1 is a minor update to 4 with a couple of bug fixes. Um, so, we'll compare the two uh, coming up soon as well. Uh. What are they doing? They don't need to be on. I want to save up for a better microphone at the moment too. If I can get some money together. <laughs> I must say I'm loving having a server back. I really am loving having a server back again. I know that someone um, commented on, on the Zentiel server that... Uh, a fancy IT person would overclock it and water cool it and I'm like no it's a server I'm not overclocking a server you don't need uh, servers don't need overclocking sure some might need water cooling or thermo cooling in some cases as some of the big Apollo systems are but you know I, I, I look at water cooling as for the PC industry more so than your standard Xeon server. And the only reason you'd probably water cool a Xeon server or the equivalent Opteron AMD server would be to, um, if you're putting that server under you know, massive loads where um, CPU temperatures are hitting, you know, thermal cutout zones, etc. So that would be where you would do it. But generically speaking, I don't think you need to really worry. All right, we're all installed. So we will reboot. Bad about seven minutes on the install. Uh, okay, Ubuntu. I believe he's put some QT stuff into this too, so we'll have a bit of a sticky beak. Wow! That doesn't look too bad, does it? That looks really, really nice, actually. Huh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, couple of couple of things straight off the bat that are just personal with this. I'd like some icons on the desk, but that's just me. Well, that's definitely different. Oh, it's QT, isn't it? Uh, okay. So, I need... File manager. There's Nautilus. Oop. Okay. Ah. First thing I want to do, I think, is get VM tools installed. So that I can um, copy two.
it's already picked up all my things, so that's nice. Into oh, select. Okay, just make sure it did go there. Oh no. Yes it did, that's good. I wanna extract it. Extract here. Oh good grief, what have I done? Open with Archive Manager. Hmm. Does not want to open. No. Alright. I'll just put it there. Okay. Whoa. Alright, so what's it called? Seven twenty five double three two three CD VMware tools distrib as you do Yes. All right. <laughs> so we'll go off and install VM tools and then we can have a, a good look at it. <clears throat> Can't even get a cup of coffee. This thing's flying. On kernel four one five zero dash thirty three. Just wait for this to uh, install, and then we'll be right. And we should be able to see what we're doing on the screen better. set that time zone as well and we'll have a look, good look at it it's interesting it wouldn't open with archive manager properly so that might be one of the bugs that's in the system ah oh, there we go alright beautiful Okay, jeez. Um, yeah, okay. So, let's... Oh, that desktop's not so crash hot. Okay, I think we'll just completely... Um, change that wallpaper. Okay. It's a little bit buggy, this, isn't it? All right, so what do we get? So we've got Play on Linux, Blender, Digicam, Critter, Restretto, and ScanRite, Interwebs. Firefox is in there. Camoso. Okay. Thunderbird and you get Download Manager. VLC's in there. OBS and Caden Live, so that's really good. Handbrake's in there as well. Audacious and Audacity. Only Office. Now let's see if this works. Because remember, it didn't work last time, and it does work. 
it does work all right look at that document spreadsheet and presentation so that's good or oh, geez i'll tell you what 62 ob20 for firefox oh boy we'll have a look at some of the system settings so discovers in there muon's in there the new muon package manager now paul's been saying that this is better than synaptic we'll have a look at that in just a moment system tools let's h top it Yeah, not too bad. 650-odd meg out of 4 gig, so it's not that bad. CPU loads are light. Load averages are good. We've got 93 tasks with 148 threads, one running. Up for 8 minutes. Not too bad. So that's not bad. About 645, 650 meg of RAM cold. So that's, that's, that's acceptable. Okay, so in here we've also got Arc, uh, Double Bleach Bit, Debrate, K3B, KFind Consoles there, Nautilus File Manager, so that's all good, and obviously Power and Session. Couple of things I would prefer to have seen, and this is just personal preference, icons on the screen to at least root, if not the home folder. You can obviously make the links if you wish. I would prefer to have it that way, that's just my personal preference. Okay, let's go and have a look at some of the system settings. Hmm, okay. I'm not i I'm not keen on this style, but that's just that's just me. I'm I'm not overly keen on that. Icon animations, all icons. So that's nice. Yep, we've got uh, emoticons. Yeah. Oh, good grief. <laughs> Look at all the emoticons, will you? Wowee. Okay, application style. So we've got the widget as obviously berries, but you can do some fine tuning stuff. Also some window decorations if you wish. And then the GNOME GTK settings. Get down to some of the hardware. And uh, we've got all this down here, removable storage. So there's a fair bit in there. That's pretty nice. It's all right. Um, I just want to change that date and time if I can. Adjust date and time. Yeah, that definitely ain't right. region that's got to be what it needs to be is that the right time that is the right time just after 20 past 8 in the morning although you guys can't see it properly I've just realised there we go Alright, so we'll have a look, quick look at the updates. So there's 63 packages you'll need to update if you decide to run it as a uh, as a daily. I will do that at a later date. Let's check the uh, IP addressing details. 133. So that's good. Alright, so again, really, really nice. I'm not probably not raving on it as much due to a few things that I would personally want out of the bat. Nevertheless, though, he's done an, another great job um, with this. Let's go and have a look at that uh, Muon package manager. Oh, I see. Okay. Hang on, guys. Phone's ringing. Sorry about that. I hate phone calls at 25 past 8 in the morning sometimes. All right, so this is the uh, Muon package manager. Okay, so what are you? I'm I'm not familiar with Muon, so I think we'll have a sticky beak at this video software. Okay, so there's a 
Okay, so you, you'll obviously need to install F. Oh no, FFmpeg's already installed. Wow. DVD streaming app. This is um a little bit different. Converted up, converted from RPM to Alien. Mono web server. Okay. A heap of email clients there. You can. Claws, mailbox. Okay. It looks like Synaptic, but it's not. Apparently. Kernel and modules. Okay, so there's a heap of. You've got an OEM kernel there. You can put in if you wish. Okay. Or you can do a complete full upgrade. Alright. That's different. I can see why it would be a nicer uh, package manager. There's the update utility. Wait for that to crop up. No internet. Oh. Oh. Uh, why have I no interwebs? Has my internet gone down? Probably. Oh no, it's there. Try that again. Ubuntu kernel update. Refresh. Oh, internet connection not active. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's just see whether we... Although, I know for TLS Handshake with Google, waiting for Google, I've got internet. It's a bit slow, but I've got it. Hmm, alright, so I don't know what's going on there. Alright, what's uh, the break? What's this all about? Oh, Debian Package Builder. Oh, okay. So you can build your own Debian package builders. Debian packages. That's interesting. Okay, that's a new one. I don't know anything about that one. NFO viewer, so you can view NFO files. That's nice. What version of VLC do we come up with here? A bit of a hunt around, shall we? Version 4. All right. Not bad. Well, that's a nicer background. Hmm. Um, for me personally, um, it's nice. Um, but as I said, there's a few things that I would personally want to see off the bat, and that's obviously a folder, uh, a link to root, although you can, you know, we can create one. Basic link to directory. That should link. All right, try home. Hmm. Um, okay, well, I'll have to figure out what's going on there. I'll have a bit more of a play with this. Um, nevertheless, he's done a wonderful job on it. I mean, he really has done another wonderful job. Uh, there's a lot in there that I'm happy about, as always. I mean, it's very rare Paul misses anything out. 
but uh, okay, all right. Well, there we go. Hybrid X4 from Paul Turner. No, I like the fact Nautilus is in there. That that I'm happy about. That I am happy about because Nautilus is actually a very nice, um, very nice file manager and file browser. I I, I do like Nautilus over Dolphin um, in newer Linuxes, but sort of for uh, older stuff like the open man drives and that I prefer Dolphin but look again he's done another wonderful job with Hybrid X4 now there is a special edition of Hybrid X on the way out when he gets the time as well so there we go Hybrid X4 from Paul Turner I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to go and check it out for yourselves download it etc again he's done another wonderful job with this he really has done another wonderful job he always does um, but there are just a few few personal things that I would prefer to have seen off the bat but that's just my opinion you guys may look at this completely differently but go and have a look at it for yourselves Hybrid X 4.4 I should say from Paul Turner there we go done Stick around, plenty more coming up on the channel today here at the Backyard Tech Channel. Until then, as always, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.